Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Sesame Street sign on rough fencing wood. We just took five minutes just to sand it all down nicely. If you can see the end section there, it actually comes rougher than that. In fact, that's basically what it's like when it turns up. But I just got a belt sander, spend five minutes sanding it all down, and it comes up really nice. And it's nice wood to work on. If you're just starting in the world of routing and scroll saw projects. So you don't have to go out and waste money on really fantastic woods. When you're only just starting and learning the little hobby that we have here before us. Now as always for me, I've printed off the Sesame Street sign. Now it, I'll be honest, I've used tracing paper before. And I can blow it up off the tablet to the size I need. I took a guess on this one and just printed it out and thought... It looks six inches high. There is, there is apps out there. I'm sure there's computer programs out there where you can put in six inches by 18 and it will make that sign that size. I just haven't dipped that on my on my fire, uh, side, should I say. So I guessed it and it literally fits in. I've come right down to the end of the wood. So there's no cutting along there. We will cut this out on a scroll saw at the end. And it's literally to the top of the wood there. So a couple of millimetres bigger and it wanted to fit on the wood. So I got really lucky there and sometimes it happens. A little bit smaller would have been fine. A little bit bigger. Well, you can print off again. Anyways, we've printed it off. We've put it onto our fencing wood. And I just pop carbon paper underneath. Nice fresh piece. Not something like this. This has been in my shed from day one. And I just use it for video purposes. And then get yourself a nice pen. I'd rather use Biro to go around. It just stands out better. And let's just draw around the old piece. Because there was a lot of straight lines in this one, you can actually get yourself a straight edge and do it like so. Once you've got all the way around, you can remove that. The good thing about using carbon paper and tracing, he says, is you can basically you can use that template over and over again if you wanted to. Some people have been known to stick the paper straight to the wood and route over the top. I have tried that the ones. There's also acetone and thinner methods where you put it in reverse and you put that on there like so with your acetone or whatever and you rub away the back of a spoon and that can transfer it over. By the time you've messed on with that, you might as well take five minutes. And for me personally, it's all part of the project. I get just as much enjoyment drawing it all out. It's quite relaxing than just coming along and rubbing the back and stuff. And there we have it. So we've got our nice signs here, plenty of straight lines to do. I'm not overly concerned. At one time, I was going to put my house number in there, which would be a nice option if you're going to make one of these. And then I was going to get the three and leave it to one side so it's like it's falling off a little bit. But as it is, we're just going to stick to what we've got here. So it's not far off the same as the original. As always for me, I'm going to come in with CNC bits. These come in 20s, 13, 15 degrees. The degree basically being... The point of the end there, I don't know if we can get that in focus. There we go, just an end piece. And we've got a 20 on there today. 30 would have obviously be thicker at the end. 10 degree is quite pointed. They do have a small shaft on them, or shank, a 3.175 millimeter. They will fit a Dremel no problem if you're using the Dremel router attachment. But for a quarter inch router, you need what they call a reduced adapter collet. And it's basically just a tube like so. A couple of slits in. Now that will slide in there. 6.35 millimeter that's now a quarter inch and that will fit my router no problem if you've got an half inch shank router you'll obviously need a bigger reducer now we will use that to do all our lines with we'll go around the old section around all the lettering all these straight lines here around that section and we'll set it at three millimeters i've made myself a little gauge like so i know that's three millimeters because it's basically the same thickness or depth as your CNC bit, which is 3.175, remember, we'll call it three millimeters to round it off. So that most of my projects are three. I have done deeper before, I've done shallower, but three just works out nice. I made a little gauge like so, and the rotor will sit on there, and I've got my depth, or you can do a couple of samples on the side there. This is gonna be wasteful at the end of the day. And I've made myself another little gauge here, like so, the router sits on there, and you've got different depths that you feel looks like the right size for the project you're using. You can obviously purchase depth gauges, no problem whatsoever, off eBay or Amazon. But a couple of minutes making one like that, and you save yourself a couple of pennies. Once we've done all the lines with the CNC bits, 
on something like this which is quite small we've got a lot of these little de details to get into i will pop on one of these little end milling bits and these are fantastic they route out clear out nicely no problem with them we've got a nice decent size one one that we can fit in here and we will clear out all that section afterwards just take your time if you want to just to shade in the areas that you're going to remove it's not so bad for me on this one because it is basically just straight lines so just take your time remember we want to move all these sections around here you might just go away come back and start routing out the inside of one of your letters well that's the end of that project okay and then we'll cut it out quickly you could use a bandsaw i just prefer to use a scroll saw so we'll pop this into our router we'll set it to three millimeters and we'll start routing all the letters out right we've used our little gauge we've set it to three millimeters you can just see that cnc bit in there and that's the depth we're going to work at today and if you're not too happy with little gauges just do a couple of little sample shots over there like so and finally that looks deep enough and obviously you can mark that off and if should you use your router on another project he says oh leave a pencil that works when you come back to this one again you can just set it to that same depth there I've done a couple of letters already. I've done the ASE, and it seems to be routing up fairly fine. I've no problem. When you route out, remember, we're doing outset lettering, so basically the letters will be raised, and we're going to remove all the surrounding area. If it was inset lettering, lettering should I say, we would be removing the letters and just leaving all the outside areas raised up. And it's cut fine. I've had no problems with that. Remember, it is just cheap fencing wood. But ideal if you're just starting off, and remember these bits I use, CNC bits, end milling bits, they're ideal, just eBay specials. If you're just starting out and you want to give it a go, and if it's your cup of tea, go and treat yourself some nice profile bits, liner bits, spiral look cuts. There's plenty of different bits out there for plenty of different folk. But CNC bits, end milling bits for me. Okay, we'll route a couple of things out, give you a general idea what's going on, then we'll speed it up a little bit. And then we'll come back and start removing the back. Right, that's all our lettering done. And it's near enough for what I need. Remember, we are going to go around this with an end milling bit so we can tidy all these sections up. I'm just trying to get it in view there without smashing it all. So don't worry like there, look. If it's not perfect, we will sort that out with the end milling bits. And also, I like to go around with an engraving bit on a flexi cable just to give it a tidy up. So no panic. If like there, it's just not quite right. But if you look closely... You can more or less just to see the pencil lines all the way around. Remember, we've routed up to the line. And we've done our one, two, three there at the top as well. I've removed some sections there just so we can use that as a guide when we come in with the end milling bit. We can sit the router on there, set it at that depth and basically remove all that background. Just before that, we have all these straight lines to do. Now, I will just do them freehand and it's not showing off or anything. It's just that I don't really... 
overly concerned if they're not perfectly straight. If you're a little bit funny with things like that, just get yourself a straight edge like so, and you can clamp that on. If you set your router into where you want your position, let's say there, to do that top line, just there, you can put your straight edge on the, like so, put a little clamp on, and same again, bring this router over to this end here, put your clip on like so. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, I think I'm coming a bit too far. There we go. So you imagine that with your little clips on. You will have to work out something to put underneath to keep it flat or work basically off the end of the table. You imagine that will be nice and flat. Now you can come in with your router. You've got it into that corner there and just use that as a nice guide to do a nice straight edge. And obviously you can remove it and do exactly the same there. But I'll just do it freehand. So we'll skim around these edges quickly and then we'll pop on the end bill a bit and we'll be ready to clean it out. Right, that's all our lines done. Definitely near enough what I want. So we've gone all the way around. Remember, we've got to remove all this back section so these letters stand up and obviously the one, two, three there. So no problem, they're all sorted out. We've got our end milling bits here. I've picked one, excuse me, I've picked one that's a nice size, big enough to remove, easy enough, yet we still want it to fit into these tight areas. So this one's just going to about fit in there. End milling bits, like I say, they do come without that barrier on now. So if you can't find them, they're exactly the same with or without the barrier. And it's just a simple case of removing the CNC bit. You will get a lot more projects out of that. And we just slot that in there, up to that little barrier. Pop that into our router. Remember, we've removed some sections, so we can just set it to that depth there. And literally just start removing out all the outer section so all that area there we're going to remove out and around there like so okay so we'll pop that in set it to our depth and basically start removing around the letters Right, that's it for our end milling bits. That's come out no problem whatsoever. Just remember, it's just cheap, cheap fencing wood. You can see how rough it is. But if somebody's just starting out, pay a two pound for a six foot length, two pound thirty, and you'll get lots of projects out of that. And you can see it routes out near enough for what you want for little projects for the garden and stuff. Now that's our CNC bits finished with. We've finished with the end milling bit. Now I'm just going to cut this out first. I'm going to use a scroll saw. You could use a band saw. You could even get with an hand saw and then round those edges off on a sanding uh, belt. 
Is, it, what, is that the word I'm looking for? Sanding belt? But I'm just going to cut them out on a scroll saw for me personally. Just a quick one. I do mention it on most of my videos. There's three types of, we'll call it basic blades for your scroll saw. You got a pin blade. They come on your more common ones. And they literally just have a pin at both edges like so. And obviously at that end. And they just clip onto you like that on your saw. And the teeth facing towards you. They want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That would work fine on this one, no problem whatsoever. For more detailed work, you can get a pinless blade. And remember, there's all fancier types of blades, but they're all basically pinned or pinless. And then that would be ideal if you're doing really detailed work. Imagine we we're going to cut out the centre of that letter A. You would drill a pilot hole and that would fit in there, no problem. And you could cut out that A if you wanted to. Whereas with your pin blades... You wouldn't fit that in there because those pins would be in the way. So it's a personal thing. Now for me, I use spiral blades. Pegasus number five today. The teeth on a spiral blade are spiraled the full length of the blade like so. So they will cut in any direction. Ideal for big projects where you won't be able to turn it around on your saw. We can basically start here and we can just feed that round like so. Whereas with your other two blades... You would have to feed that into there and then turn that piece completely to feed it down there and then turn it again completely to feed it down there. So spiral blades for me, but they're not for everybody. They are definitely a love or hate relationship. Unfortunately, my little drapper scroll saw that came off Noah's Ark, I have to use these adapter clamps on mine. So they're a little bit of a pain. You basically put your blade in, you've got to tighten it up with an Allen key and they will become your pins and you hook that at the top and bottom. And if you went on to your next cut, you've got to take it off. Feed it out and so on and so on. So they're a little bit of a pain, but you do and work with what you have. So pin, pinless or spirals. Pegasus number five, spiral shall I say. Pegasus number five today for this one. This will cut through this no problem. We'll literally cut this out quickly. Nothing too fancy to see there. And then we'll go around and give it a nice tidying up. I like to use engraving bits simply attached to the end of my flexi cable. If I can just get hold of it. Just cheap eBay again. We've got a nice flat engraving bit you'll get a packet of 30 of these off ebay amazon for next to nothing and they come with different heads on like so and i get one with a nice flat bottom as we say and as that's spinning round that will just clean that out nicely so we will do that after the cut and then obviously good old bit of sandpaper fold it up like so and that will give us a nice solid piece to do our lettering okay I'll do that quickly now, and then when we come back, we'll be ready for painting. Right, that's enough cleaning up and sanding down for me. You can see from that we've got our nice little plaque sorted out. We've rounded those edges off slightly and we gave it a little skim on the back there. So now it's down for painting wise. Originally I was just going to put a dark stain on this and a lighter stain. It is nice to leave a bit of wood showing. 
but there is some projects where unfortunately it's all to be painted now you you could obviously spray this if you wanted to i prefer to just paint it and the idea is to paint the back of first so the all around the lettering and around the numbers that comes in a green i don't even know i've got the right colors i've looked at these and are they right i've no idea they'll be near enough what we want but little painters touch so we'll pop that on the background doesn't matter if we go over any of the letters because we will skim over a little mouse sander just make our letters and numbers nice and crisp again and then we'll come in with the white now white's one of the worst colors i'll end up going over this twice if not three times i can guarantee you that on the letters and the numbers and then we'll have a yellow to finish off with there's not even going to be enough yellow in there so i'm going to mix a bit of lemon with it it doesn't matter if the colors aren't perfect remember we're adding our own thing i could have done this blue green and multicolored letters if i wanted to just to be really freaky we want to keep it somewhere near don't we so we'll go off and paint this no wood sealants at all on some projects you've got to be careful but as we are painting it all it doesn't matter if we had any bleed bleeding is where you put your paint on the side of the out area and it can bleed into the lettering and when you come to sand it down you've got your paint still bled through and it just shows up and it's not a nice crisp line i've had no issues with fencing wood personally and i've definitely had no issues with these little paints here so no sanding sealers no varnish spray on first just pop our green on sand it down and then we'll paint the rest and then we'll paint, spray on a little bit of varnish at the end doesn't really need it these are outdoor paints but it'll just give it a little bit of a shine and this little project will be heading towards the finishing line okay let's go and find a decent brush and we can start painting this one up right that's it this little project is finished now to finish it off with i just sprayed on some just some varnish any description it didn't really matter to me more so just give it a nice shiny finish than protection they will last for a while and the paints are designed to go outside so there wasn't really any need to to spray on it but as you can see from there i just do prefer a nice shiny shiny finish and that's it this little project is finished so we did all our lines with those cnc bits for the lines remember these are only the bits that i use they're really cheap off ebay or amazon i will put links in the description and as you progress in this little hobby and you want to try different things you can obviously go for profile bits and liner bits to do your lines with but for the money and what you pay for You've certainly got no issues with those little CNC bits. And same again for the clear out purposes. N milling bits. Fantastic. They're really, I'm really pleased with those. And they clear out really nice. No problem whatsoever. After we did all that, we gave a little tidy up, remember, with our little engraving bits. And then we use painters touch paints. These are ideal. They are for outdoors, so no problem. And they are gloss finish. But like I say, I do prefer a little bit more shine on it. And we mixed a bit of yellow in with a lemon just to finish it off with. And then we got all that nicely dried. We just went in with the spray. Three, four coats of that. Literally just to finish it off and give it that shine. And you get a couple of years. If it's an indoor project, it will last a lifetime personally, I think. But for outdoor, in time, like any wood, it would eventually show its age. So, it, And it also measures in... We're going to call it 16 inches by 6 inches, just on rough fencing wood, remember. So that will obviously alter how good your 
project will be regarding to the quality of the wood you're using. Now this one's just going to go into my garden on the front gate and I will just literally put some screws through the back of the gate and straight into the back of there. I will paint the back of this before I put it on or put some boiling seed oil on. So I will just screw screws into the back of there for hanging purposes. Normally I use what they call a, a keyhole slot router bit like this. And you just pop that into the router, put it onto your back of wood, sink it in. I've actually got a piece here to show you. You should see the slot there, should I say? You put your router, sink that in, and go across here, route out, bring it back, pop it back out again, and that leaves you a nice slot on there. You get your screw, put your screw in the fence, the further you have your screw in, the tighter it's going to be, and you can slot that into the hole and slide it over, and that will stay on there, no problem. Nice and tight. The tighter you have, uh, the further you have your screw in, so you've just got the end of the screw showing, that's going to be really tight to get on. And that works perfect for little projects like this one that uh, you don't want any screws in or anything like that. And while I'm here, yeah, little Elmo, he obviously goes along with that one there. So that's it. This little project is finished. Nice Sesame Street sign routed out on rough fencing wood painted with painter's paints and a quick spray with a little varnish to finish it off. Thank you very much for watching.